Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you how I glitter a blank with my glitter mixed into UV resin. Uh, my previous videos were using epoxy, but this right here is UV resin with glitter. And then I have my decal that will say fight like a preemie. The shape is a boxing glove. And then this bottom piece will be the bottom part of the boxing glove. And then the consistency that I have my glitter and my resin is kind of runny, but not, not too much. And it's not too thick either. I think when it's thick and clumpy, it kind of leaves a bumpy finish. And it's harder to seal that way versus if you kind of have it a little bit runny like this, then you can just seal it with one more thin layer of resin and not have to have such a bulky um, side of your blank. So anyways, that's what that looks like right there. And the blank is a two inch no hole acrylic shape from Zindi. The glitter that I'm using is also Zindi. It is the color Ice Ice Baby um, Ultra Fine Glitter. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand my acrylic before I glitter it. Um, some people do this, some don't. I have done plenty of acrylics where I don't sand them at all. And I've never had that problem of the UV resin peeling away or popping off. But I'm just showing you in the video how I do sand it with a little sanding block. If you prefer to prepare your blank that way. You don't have to do too much, just kind of scuff it up so that the resin has something to adhere to. So now I'm just going to pour my resin onto the blank. I'm using a wooden craft stick. Um, you can get like a 50 pack I think from Walmart for like $1.88. Um, I do have silicone brushes that I use for larger blanks like the three inch shapes um, or two and a half inch shapes but the two inch and the smaller shapes like the minis I like to use the little wooden craft sticks. It just helps me spread the resin around a little easier. Now the reason that I don't pour all of the resin on at one time is because I feel like a little goes a long way. Um, so I kind of just pour a little at a time and spread it around as I go because it's easy for resin to spill over the edges and then you have a big mess to clean up after the fact versus you adding a little bit here and there and then just kind of um, spreading it around as you go. And I just kind of keep in mind that you can add more but it's really really hard to kind of take away and clean up a mess after the fact so that's why i do it this way now don't get me wrong i do like to pour the resin on like the larger blanks like the three inch blanks or the two and a half inch blanks but these smaller ones i like to add it a little at a time just because they're easier to <laughs> make a mistake on so the only downside to covering your blank this way is that the edges won't always be completely covered because the resin tends to pull to the center. So what I do is I take my glitter in the shaker bottle, and if you don't have it in a shaker bottle and you just want to use it like with a spoon or sprinkle it with your fingers, you could do that too. But I just take the shaker bottle and I just dust it over the edges. This bottle is almost empty, so it took a second for it to work. But I'm just dusting around the edges so that that fills in any gaps that are kind of see-through with the glitter and even over the blank a little bit and this just kind of fills in and gives it a fuller coverage without having to do multiple layers of glitter so now that i finished dusting the glitter on top of the glitter resin mixture i'm gonna go ahead and put that up and grab my uv lamp uh, the lamp that I use is a 54 watt sun lamp and I know there's plenty of better brands out there. This is just the first one that I opted for. Um, I'm actually in the market for another one so if you have any ideas or recommendations of UV lamps that you prefer for your um, resin crafts, uh, let me know. But this is the one I use and I let it cure for about three minutes, sometimes three and a half, but usually three is enough okay so it's cured for that amount of time and now the next thing that I want to do is um, smooth out the edges and apply one thin layer of resin on top so the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of fill the edges and see where it needs to be sanded down 
because I'm big on not having like the rough edges. I don't like that. I wouldn't want to put a batrol on and fill the rough edges. Maybe to some people that's not a big deal, but for me it is. So I'll just grab it and kind of fill and look around to see where it needs to be sanded. And I'll take my same sanding block. It's 220, I think is the grit. And I just kind of rub the acrylic on top of it. So you don't have to do any major sanding. It's just kind of smoothing out the edges. And it makes it easier to peel away any kind of excess that kind of maybe could have dripped over. Um, I normally have a really, really thin layer and I can just kind of slice it off with my X-Acto knife and which I'll show you here in just a minute. But yeah, I've sanded it down. Okay, so if you look at the edges now, um, it's kind of hard to tell, but that little tiny thin layer, that's going to be easy for me to kind of smooth away or slice off with my X-Acto knife. Um, and that's usually what I use. And this is, I think, the True Control Blade or something like that from Cricut. It's old, so forgive the dirtiness of that grip. It's been used quite a bit. Um, but yeah, and if you don't feel comfortable using these types of blades, don't. You can just keep sanding um, and eventually you can peel it away with your fingernail if you have nails. Um, I'm super comfortable with using these types of blades. They don't scare me or make me nervous. Have I stabbed myself a few times? Yes. Um, but never to the point where I need like stitches or anything like that. I try to be a little careful with it. And I am so sorry that you can't really see what I'm doing right there, but that's basically it is I'm using the X-Acto or the True Control blade and just peeling away any excess that was on the edges of that acrylic just leaves a cleaner look at the end. Just being very careful again, I don't do it very fast, I take my time. And if you notice, I do keep the brown protective cover film on the other side of the blank when I'm not decorating it because um, I do one side at a time and that way if there was any resin that spilt over the side um, at least I know it would just be on that brown protective film and I could just peel it off um, instead of it being on the actual acrylic and where I have to sand it off of the other side or anything like that. So I always leave the brown film on one side um, and don't peel it off until I'm ready to actually work on it. I think in my other videos I showed where you can actually just mirror your design and your words and then just pour the glitter on top. And that way you just have one side that's covered in glitter and the other side is just smooth. But for bad drills, I do like to do one side with glitter and then the other side with the design. Um, I think it just has a cleaner finish. But it's totally up to you. This is just how I'm doing this one for you guys. Okay, so I've trimmed all the edges, made sure that they're nice and smooth. And now I'm ready to add my design to the front. Okay, I forgot. I'm going to add one little thin layer of my resin, which this is the kind that I use, Lamino. I'm going to do a thin layer on that back side um, just to make sure it's completely smooth on the back side. Because there is a little bit of texture when you have the glitter mixed into the UV resin. It's not horrible if you do it the way that I displayed in the video, but... Um, I want it to be completely smooth. So I just put a little bit of UV resin. I'm big on reusing, so I just broke the stick that I used previously and tossed the side that had the glitter on it and just used the other side since I'm just spreading resin like just to coat the back side. So that's what I'm doing there. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit and I'm basically just covering it in one thin layer of, of the resin. And I'm going to put it under the lamp to cure for another three minutes. And then it'll be ready for me to uh, work on the front side. Alright, so here we are. That back side is completely done. Um, it's nice and smooth. So I can go ahead and flip it to the other side and start working on this side. Um, I'm going to take my weeding pen, which is basically a mechanical pencil that I put a needle inside of. Works really good. Just peel that protective film off. 
And now I'm ready to work on this side of the blank, which is where I'm going to apply the decal and then seal with resin. So the first part that I'm going to apply is the bottom part of the boxing glove. And I'm peeling the backing away from the decal. And I'm going to use the wet method, which is basically a little spritzer bottle filled with water and about one drop of dish soap. And I just spritz it one time on the vinyl decal. And that allows me to apply this to the blank and get any kind of air bubbles out. And so that's why I use it for this little piece. And just lay it where I need to. Just line it up. And I'm just going to take my scraper or squeegee, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to smooth it out. Make sure all the water is pushed out from underneath. And if there are any bubbles, they're really easy to push out when you do the wet method. And that's why I prefer it on these smaller blanks like this. I'm just going to peel that away. Sorry that that's not in the frame, but that's what I was doing, just peeling the tape away. All right, now I'm just going to grab the wording of Fight Like a Preemie. Um, I didn't have my contact paper on there, so I'm just going to grab a piece of that and apply it to the decal so that I can transfer it onto the acrylic. So I'm just going to smooth it out on there, just use my fingers, and then I'll use my squeegee and my scraper as well just to make sure that it's really adhered to the contact tape or transfer tape, whatever you'd like to call it. And again, I'm going to peel the backing away from the decal. That's always worked best for me. It's just easier and it's smoother as far as like the decal being pulled away. I'm going to line it up. I don't use the wet method for this part. I don't feel like it needs it. And it's not going to be perfectly aligned because it's a boxing glove and it's at an angle on the top. But I just kind of get it as neat as possible. I just smooth that over with my fingers and then my scraper. I will go over it a few times. Um, I try to go in the same direction instead of going back and forth, but sometimes I do go back and forth. Um, but most of the time, I'll try to just go in one direction and then pull the tape away at an angle. And then the decal's on there. So now, um, I'm just going to perfect the dots on the eyes. Some of them kind of moved away during the transfer. So that little eye right there, I'm just kind of correcting it. And this is just the little moment that you have to do any kind of corrections before you add the layer of resin to seal it in. So the final step is just to seal in that decal with the UV resin. Same type of UV resin that I used. I'm just going to put a layer on there. So now that the acrylic has completely cured, it's ready to be attached to the bad drill. I'm using a Specialist ID Swivel Alligator Clip. I'm just going to take my resin, and um, as you can see right here, I just I'm showing that it's completely done. It's cured on both sides. And I'm going to take my resin and put a thin layer on the outer edge of the bad drill. I try not to get too much in the center because I find that it's harder to cure that part since the light doesn't hit it directly. So I just get the edges. And then I normally put a dot of E6000 in the middle to just keep it secure. I didn't do that here, but that's normally what I do. And then just place my bad drill or my acrylic onto the bad drill. And then I'll put it under the light. And what I have it sitting on is a, um, oh, I can't think of the name. It's a insert from Shaker Cups. And it just happens to fit the reel perfectly for me. All right, and then my last step is just to place my UV light over the acrylic so that it completely cures to the bad drill. I usually let it cure for about three to four minutes. And then I will have a completed bad drill. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Thank you.